thank you, thank you, students, for quieting down. We have an exciting program for you, Dr. McCord, Principal Madigan Middle School. And we'd like to thank all of our visitors, our parents, our grandparents, our veterans who are here today. We want to put on a very, very, very special program for you. We know that every day to us is Veterans Day. You keep our country safe and you make sure we have the freedoms that we have. So we're so, so thankful for having you. We have a wonderful program for you today. We will have later some letters that I will share with you from our students. We'll have retired Colonel Michael Mulligan is going to do a speech and, to, and share some information with you. And then we'll have Nikki Randolph from American Legion. She's going to come and share as well. So we want you at this time, I want to turn it over for some music today. Mrs. Burrow, Mr. Kiefer will be leaving us in several selections. So enjoy. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ms. Pearl, and I'm the choir director here at Manatee Middle School. Uh, this is the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade choirs. As we get to that little transition, the band will be appearing quite shortly. Um, the first song we are going to do for you is the Star Spangled Banner. So when you hear it, please rise. Uh, the next two selections are done by the choir. One is called We Honor You, and the other is called Let Freedom Ring. We hope you enjoy.
thank all our students and Corey, you did a wonderful, wonderful job. At this time, we're going to have Mr. George come forward to introduce our speaker for today. It is my pleasure to introduce retired Colonel Michael Mulligan. As a Marine, Colonel Mulligan served 26 years and started out as an infantry officer and served as a platoon commander. As a company executive officer in the 1st Marine Division, executive officer in the 3rd Division, and a company commander in the East Coast of the 2nd Division. His overseas tours included Japan, Korea, Saudi Arabia, and Australia. It is with great pleasure that I introduce you Colonel Michael Milligan.
but a flag deserves respect. How do we respect the flag? Who knows? There you go. Say again. Don't let it touch the ground. That's correct. The flag should never touch the ground. How else? In the back. You stand for it, okay? Hold on one second, we're coming back to you. When do we stand for it? Pledge of Allegiance, National Anthem, much like you just did, correct? Right? And how do we stand? Stand straight? Do you stand rock solid in a position of attention? You can. It's not inappropriate. But that's not mandatory. You're, you're respectfully standing for, for the flag. What, when do you see that most often done? Somebody up here said football games. That's true. All sporting events, right? Again, it goes back to the freedoms that we have. We have the freedom to be spectators at a particular game, football, soccer, lacrosse. We have that freedom. We can go and we don't have to go. We have the freedom to compete as athletes in that game, right? And so prior to each competition, we take 60 seconds or 75 seconds to listen to the national anthem and be grateful for that time that we have, that freedom that we have. Okay, so it's, it's very appropriate. When you stand for that national anthem, you're standing respectfully, motionless. What else are you doing? What else should you be doing? Right here. Have your hand on your heart. Or if you're in uniform as a, as a military person, you would render the appropriate salute, right? Okay? Go ahead. You should face the flag, that's correct. If you're a man, you should take the hat off. Not mandatory for women, but it's absolutely right. And you'll hear that at football games. Rise, face the flag. Gentlemen, please take your hats off, right? Over your heart. So that's appropriate respect. Go ahead. Exactly. Whatever it is that you have on your mind is not as important as that little bit of respect we pay to the flag and our nation at that time. Go ahead. If the flag is displayed in the evening after sunset, absolutely must be underlined. Should not be out in the dark. That's another, another good, good point. So if you're on a military base, and I've spent a little bit of time on military bases, they will have colors in the morning and colors in the evening. For the Marines, at 8 o'clock, colors go up. And the colors are raised very quickly. The anthem is played. And if you're within sight or sound of morning colors, you stop what you're doing, you face the flag, you render the appropriate salute in the uniform. Otherwise, you pay you stand at attention until colors end. In the evening, when sun sets, the flag is lowered very slowly and ceremoniously. Again, colors is played, and if you're within sight or sound, or even driving a car on a military base, without causing an accident, you would stop and let the colors come down to pay respect to the flag. It doesn't happen everywhere, but I'm sure you have morning colors here at Madison, don't you, Dr. Ford? Yeah. So, so, again, it goes up vigorously, it comes down slowly and ceremoniously. What else do we not do with the flag? Go ahead. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, he said set it on fire. If you are disrespectful, burning the flag, as we've seen in, in the news from time to time, that is absolutely incorrect. You should not be doing that. Others should not be doing that. Uh, but when can you burn the flag? In the back. Say again. Uh, not when you drop it. I mean, occasionally an accident will happen. Go ahead. When the flag becomes torn, unserviceable, or faded to the point that it needs to be retired, it is burned. Okay, ceremoniously burn. Why is that? Why do we burn it? It should no. Why why would we burn the flag like that? Maybe because we want to see the flag in the clearest way to remember them instead of like one way. 
We, okay, that, that's not a bad thought. You're on the right track. You're kind of dancing around. The flag should never be tarnished or soiled. And to merely ball it up and throw it in a dumpster with everyday garbage would be disrespectful. Subsequently, when the flag is um, worn out and unserviceable, maybe torn due to too much wind or whatever, it is ceremoniously burned and disposed of. It's respectful. So if you do it as a demonstration against the U.S. is wrong. If you do it ceremoniously, it's appropriate. Okay, let's talk about parades. We've all seen parades. We have parades right here in Stevensville. What is the appropriate thing to do as the flag comes past you in a parade? Somebody behind me.
do render a couple of selections here. And I'll start with my sixth grade uh, letter. They were chosen from across the school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Uh, both me and the assistant principal and some of the teachers looked at them, and then we look at them again and select the ones we think really, really, really uh, represent what we want to say to you today. All of the letters were fantastic, and we'll make sure uh, they go to some very, very fine people today. So the first letter from sixth grade, it says, Dear Veterans, I'm writing this letter to you today to thank you for all that you have done to protect our country. I am extremely grateful to live in America, especially because I have brave men and women like you protecting me. It takes a lot of bravery and courage to join the armed forces, so you are a very brave person. Personally, I would be very scared and nervous, but not you. I think that people who sign up to be in the armed forces are people who are signing up to be heroes. So you are a hero. Thank you so much for all that you've done to protect this beautiful country we call America. And that's sincerely, Lily. So give Lily a hand for that. <laughs> From our seventh grader, dear veterans, I can't express with words how thankful I am of you and everything you do and sacrifice for our country. Any veteran that is reading this is brave, caring, courageous, strong, fearless, bold, daring, and a tough warrior. You are so inspirational, and I want to be just like you. I want to one day tell stories to my future kids and grandkids about the adventures of the military. I can say thank you a million times a minute, but you will never fully understand my gratitude for people like you. I appreciate everything you do, from risking your life to being the cook for hundreds of people. Thank you for the hundredth time, and I love all of you guys, and that's sincerely, Ella Fielding. Give Ella a hand for that. from one of our eighth graders. Dear veterans, thank you. I can only imagine how hard it must be or must have been for you. Whether you are currently serving or you have already served in the military, I thank you for your sacrifices you have made. You have put your own life on the line with the possibility of never seeing your families again or getting permanently injured in a way that will change your lives forever. You have protected the freedom of the people around you in your everyday life outside of the military, and so many more people like me. Whether you have served in the Coast Guard, the Navy, Army, Air Force, or the Marines, you are appreciated and I thank God that you were able to make the sacrifice you did in your life to protect not just mine, but everybody's right that was stated in the Bill of Rights. For example, the First Amendment, which gives us our freedom of speech, press, religion, protest, and assembly. I thank you for your services and your sacrifice. Sincerely, Michaela. So thank you, give Michaela a hand for a wonderful, wonderful letter. Again, remember our students, when you see a veteran, know our veterans, and Veterans Day is every day. It's not just today. They keep us safe each and every day. And we want to always be respectful and thank them for their service when you see them. I know you have grandparents, you have aunts and uncles. Please make sure you go out of your way to make sure you know how much we appreciate them each and every day. Because we get to allow to be here at school safe why they're really, really protecting our countries. And so we want to let them know how much we appreciate and love the service they provide for us for freedom. So at this time, we're going to have our band come forward to render some selection.
Good afternoon. Uh, the eighth grade band is going to be performing a selection called Salute to America's Finest. And there are five different sections, and each section is the different branch of the military, starting with the U.S. Army, followed by Navy, then Coast Guard, Marines, and finally the Air Force. And if there are any veterans here that served in any of those branches that uh, wish to stand and be recognized when your song is played, that is more than welcome. Thank you.
would like to give some letters to American Legion so if Nikki would come back up here for me. We hear they love to read our letters. So I want to present from six, seven, and eighth grade letters to take back to the post and let them know how much we appreciate your support and we love them. And as they laugh and read, we want to make sure we have this for you. Do you guys want to really know what happens to your old letters? After we read them over and over at the Legion and cry and just love you guys so much, we send them overseas to the guys that are deployed. That's what we do. So thank you. So at this time, I definitely like, like to thank retired Colonel Mulligan for coming. Can we give them another hand? Thank you so much. Nikki Randolph from American Legion. Let's give her another hand. And all of our veterans who came today, thank you, thank you for your service. <laughs> Students, make sure that you, as you dismiss and you see a veteran or know of a veteran, please take the day tomorrow to thank them for your service and your appreciation for all the sacrifices they've done. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I want you to be respectful to self, others, and your community today. So I want to show how well we know how to follow those three R's, okay, for respect. So we're going to quietly let seventh grade on his side stand.